everybody and welcome back to Dirt Road Nation. I'm Zach. And I'm Jake. We are the Dirt Road Men. Got a fucking heater in my way. I'm scooted way back here. Oh, that's so good. You know those uh, Smuckers and Crustables? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know those are just raviolis. There's no meat. Is it, shouldn't there be meat in ravioli? No. I, dis yeah. I disagree with this sentiment. There's cheese and you can just get cheese raviolis. Mm. That's, that's like pineapple pizza though, it's blasphemy. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta speak up, you can't fucking hear me when I do that. <laughs> we got into a real discussion there for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm gonna figure out our uh, microphone thing. Yeah, I really need to figure out how to do that because I've been listening to our audio and it's kind of echoey in here. And I really don't want to hang up sound shit. Yeah. Anywho, uh, well, do you? Uh, <laughs> we're here to review Four Roses single barrel today, and uh, I think he's already drunk, so. Hey, you can't drink all day if you don't start in the morning. Ah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Four Roses uh, uses two different mash bills and five different yeast strains to come up with ten different recipes. The single barrel uses only uh, recipe number one and it is 60% corn, 35% rye, 5% malted barley and they use yeast strain V. Okay. So my favorite single barrel I've ever had is OBSO. So. OBSO. Yep. They label them out. Oh, okay. If you look up the thing that you sent me, mm -hmm. it labels each one as like OBSV, OBSQ, oh, okay. OBSO. So, OBSO is my favorite. I've only seen it once, but every time there's a single barrel release, I watch for it. Okay. That might have just been... Wasn't that a store pick? It was a Kansas City Whiskey Society pick. That might have been why it was different, because all of their regular single barrels come from the same... Mm -hmm. mash bill. Yeah, no, I watch for store picks oh, okay. of that mash bill because the store pick will usually have a sticker on the side or something with the mash bill that they used. Oh, okay. So if you if you do enjoy this stuff, watch your store picks and you can try different recipes of the same thing. <coughs> Highly recommend. So 1984, Paul Jones Jr. moved his uh, business in the whiskey business to Kentucky in 19 or 1888 they trademarked the name Four Roses. Uh, 1922 they bought the Frankfurt Distilling Company and in 1943 Seagram bought the Frankfurt Distilling Company to get the Four Roses. Hmm. Uh, there was the most selling bourbon in the United States in the 30s, 40s, and 50s, uh, Singram decided to discontinue sales here in the United States for whatever flippin' reason and move it to the growing European and Asian markets, which is still the highest selling bourbon in both Europe and Japan today. 2002, the Curran Brewery purchased the Four Roses brand trademark and brought it back to the United States. I'm glad they did. Because even the base Four Roses is pretty decent. I believe we reviewed it. Well, I know we reviewed it previously on this channel. I believe it's still up. And so they came back to the U.S. in 2002. In 2011, 12, and 13, uh, they were named American Whiskey Distiller of the Year by Whiskey Magazine. Nice. You have more? Yeah, just how Impressive. they got the name. Oh, I remember this story. It's so fucking All right. sweet. Yeah. Okay. So how they got the name. A little sappy. The founder fell in love uh, with a gal and sent her a uh, proposal. Like, if, if uh, she was gonna say yes, she would wear a corsage of roses on her gown to the upcoming Grand Ball. 
Uh, she showed up wearing the corsage of four roses, and he named his uh, company after it, and his logo, their logo is... He has the four roses corsage. Yeah. So. Is that just fucking sweet? That's pretty legit. Yeah, that's actually really cool. Like, way better than my last proposal story. Hey! <laughs> hey! Hey, they said we gotta get married. Alright, I gotta marry somebody. You wanna get married? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, how it went. So, <laughs> Jake said he won't be the uh, the Chuck to my Larry. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Uh. Anyway, uh, this is a really good whiskey. On the nose, it's very full and and sweet. There's a little bit of cherry. Uh, that's that's kind of central to this one, and it's got like a caramel cherry thing going on that I think blends very nicely. That's common with bourbon, but but it's it's unique in this one. And it's kind of a uh, fruity. Mm-hmm. Like if uh, especially for bourbon. No, there's like a little pastry thing Nora used to make. And it was like, oh, mm -hmm. just like some kind of like crusty dough thing, and then it's uh, <laughs> crusty dough. Some fruit goop on top, covered in caramel. <laughs> crusty dough and fruit, fruit goop, you heard it here. Son of a bitch. You, you have just a way of selling things when you talk about them, bud. <laughs> <laughs> Warlord uh. bird mouth. <laughs> um... <laughs> This is why he writes scripts for the other part. <laughs> oh man, now they're really gonna think I'm actually grown. <laughs> One thing I like about the finish to this though is it has a high rye finish, uh, which makes sense because you read the mash bill and it's like 35 percent rye. Right? Mm -hmm. like that's it's pretty high, um, and it it just pops in a lot of the way wild turkey does, but there's a lot more sweetness to the to that back end pop. The, the booty pop, we'll call it. And uh, it just lingers. Like, for <clears throat> it really sticks with you. In a way that pleases me. Greatly. So the uh, the booty pop sticks with you and pleases you a great thing. Sure she does. <laughs> we like your wife, Fred. I don't remember his name, so I just went with Fred. Oh. His wife. Oh, of course. Jesus oh. Christ. He just told the whole story and then whoop, gone. <laughs> the only uh, thread that popped into my head was uh, Nora's grandfather. Oh, you actually thought of someone named Fred, and that that's gross now. Thanks for that image. You're welcome. That was something I never needed in my life. Paul Jones Jr. We like your wife, Paul. Joseph Watson. Anyway. That was awful. So, moving on. I am at... I'm at an 8. I was at a 9, so there you go. I almost wanted to go for a 10. If I had this at cast strength, which most store picks are, I would be at a 10 with this. Because all I want is this, but turned up. Because it's got... It's got some of that heat and, and, and alcohol forwardness that... Stag Jr. has, but it's also got some fruit. Yeah. Excuse me. <laughs> We're trying, damn it! But it's also got some fruit in that mix that I really uh, enjoy. That would be very complementary yet different to the stag. And at a cast strength mixture. I would, I, I bet that would be truly amazing. It would perfect all of that. Maybe it would sharpen the notes, but it, I picture it as perfecting all of that and, and really polishing this off right. I, uh, as everybody knows, I could not have said that better myself. <laughs> if there's ever been a video that was an example of that, it's this one, buddy. <laughs> I get tasting notes of. <laughs> Some flaky bread, crusty, crusty bread, and fruit goop. 
drizzled in caramel. This is, these are the greatest tasting notes of all time. You will only get tasting notes like that on this channel. <laughs> when we get our shirts going, <laughs> that could be a question. <laughs> crusty, crusty bread and fruit goop. Yep. We'll have to have you describe smoky whiskey and do one of those too. It's kind of like some motor oil and oil ass and. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Somebody just put that in a smoker and left it for like four or five hours and then dropped it in the ashes. That's what this whiskey tastes like. I don't know why I dipped so hard into that accent there, but <laughs> given your description of this whiskey, that's how I pictured you describing the throwing lord. So. <laughs> Or Lefroy 10. Lore's got some fruity notes in there. Oh, you know what's uh, fucking hilarious? Huh. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Well, now that we've fucked that up good and right, till we see you again with booty popping and funky ass crusty Pop Tarts and fruit goop. I'm Zach. <laughs> I'm Jake. <laughs> we are the Dirt Road Men. If you like this video, uh, hit the subscribe button, the notification bell, drop us a comment, and check out our uh, Facebook page for daily updates.